All right, guys, today we're going to talk about what might be something you either entirely agree with or entirely don't agree with. But today we're going to talk about what I consider a knife collector's perfect knife. Now, inv invariably, each collector, and I'll do another video on this um, subject, but each collector probably has their own desires, wishes, interests. We all kind of do. It's just a part of being, well, a human. But at the same time, too, I wanted to go over why I think the Hinder XM18 3.5 inch in particular is the knife collector's perfect knife. Okay, so let's talk about it. So why do I think that this is the perfect knife? So first off for me, uh, I think that, you know, with knife collectors, once again, everyone has their own preferences, tastes, styles, and invariably the Hinder or XM18, uh, notwithstanding the handle and the general um, ergonomics, has the highest degree of different blade shapes, blade profiles, blade steels, and even sizes. You could even step this down to the uh, XM18 3 inch if you wanted the little bit smaller version of this you can even step it up to the xm24 if you wanted the same basic knife just bigger so i think that as a whole the xm family uh covers a lot of bases without really being um too fundamentally different and on top of that too um once again not changing quite the handle ergonomics but you can even get a wide variety of different handles this one of course is purple and black g10 you can get full titanium you can and get stabilized woods there's tons and tons of options and what that means for a knife collector is not only can you customize one singular knife but if you wanted a hinderer in your collection to match a certain theme color um, blade steel blade shape you know you can get worn cliffs you can get um, of course recurves like this one you can get the spanto you can get normal tantos you can get all kinds of things that um, you know just make this knife unique in and of itself and in addition to this too i usually am a very large fan of forward finger choils but you can even get xm18s without forward finger choils so as a rule i would say that you know regardless to what some people will say about the quality the heat treat you know there's a lot of people that dislike hinders as a rule but undoubtedly as far as one singular knife like the xm18 or xm family has to be one of the most versatile um, families of knives that exist because of the sheer amount of blade steels, blade shapes, handle materials, um, and of course blade lengths, handle lengths that are out there. Now, outside of that, you know, versatility or customization that you can do to the XM18 or the XM family as a whole, the other thing that I really like about this blade is its execution. Now, of course, this one is tuned a little bit, so it is a little bit smoother than maybe your average stock XM18, but you can, this does show that you can get an XM18 to be incredibly smooth. So this action is very, very well tuned. And you guys can see here, you know, it has a strong flipper action. This was a light flick, but if you really want to get after it, you can really flick this thing out, give it a really positive, you know, engagement. Um, but either way you slice it, this thing has a very, very good action. In addition to that too, this flipper tab, is very solid. It is really good. Everything, like I said, is very well tuned. The ergonomics are nice. In addition to that, too, I think one thing that is really worth noting is that the XM18, whether you like it or not, and truly the XM family, has a very long history in EDC. Now, EDC is fairly new, I guess, in the grand scheme of history as a whole, but, um, you know, these things these things have been around for quite some time, and not only that, um, XM18s especially, you know, were some of like the first legitimate uh, flipper knives to exist. They're really what popularized flipper knives. I'm not going to say that there weren't some gas station knives out there trying to, you know, make a flipper kind of tab like this, but the XM18 was the first real like high quality knife to feature a flipper on it for the express intent of flipping. Now, of course, you can also get flipperless um, models of the XM18, both the three and a half inch and the three inch. And of course, you can also use the thumb studs, as you guys can see here. Um, hopefully, I'm not hitting the flipper tab, but you can use the thumb studs to open the knife. It's just not really designed to be that way, um, at least uh, when you have a flipper tab. So anyways, um, you know, there is a lot of versatility to this guy, but at the same time, too, um, there's a lot of history. And so I think that that 
coupled with the action, coupled with the customization, is something that makes this really a, a solid option. Now, lastly, the other thing, and once again, this might be personal um, bias or preference, but I do think that the Hinder XM18s, uh, specifically the XM18s, the 24, in my opinion, is a little bit big, but if you do like your knives on the larger side, even the 24, um, they do generally uh, run pretty pocket friendly. And uh, I will say they seem to hide pretty well in the pocket. Now, of course, if you do have a flipper model, you will have that flipper tab, you know, in your pocket. So you'll have to you know keep that in mind but as it goes as a rule i can throw an xm18 in my pocket and really forget that it's there it's not obtrusive it's not overly heavy there is a lot of titanium to this knife um and so yeah they're ultimately really pretty squared away knives now of course some people might say you know if we're talking about collector's knives like the ultimate collector's knife um you know people might want something more expensive than a hinderer xm18 though i will say the full titanium custom hinders can be very 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 expensive so um i i don't think that there's necessarily a um like price point issue if you really wanted a more expensive uh, xm18 you can get a full rick hinder or custom that will match that kind of uh, need but as a rule i think that the xm18 and xm family as a whole really makes a compelling case to what a um, knife collector would want the execution is great i do think once again there are a lot of people that dislike hinders for multiple different reasons but at the same time too um, i don't think that takes away from the fact that they are excellent and there are plenty of other channels such as metal complex that very much love hinder knives and uh yeah they talk about them with the same level of enthusiasm that I have, if not slightly more. So definitely I'm not the only one to think that hinders are really solid knives. And I think if you get around anyone that has been in the knife industry for a while, for the most part, they'll all pretty much agree the hinders are pretty well squared away knives. Now, I don't necessarily think they're as timeless as a Chris Reeve like Sabenza or Nkosi, but um, at the same time too, they are a different breed of knife. and. I don't have anything wrong with that. I personally do, of all my higher end knives, such as the Striders, the Chris Reeves, the Hinders, I do have a soft spot personally for the Hinders because I like them um, a little bit more uh, aesthetically than something like a Sabenza. Not to say that there's anything inherently wrong with a Sabenza. Sabenzas are great, like I said, very timeless, but at the same time too, I kind of like my uh, Hinders just a little bit more. So. Take it for what it's worth, and none of this is, you know, hard and fast rule. But for me as a knife collector, I would have to say one of my absolute favorite knives, and what I'd say is like a perfect collector's knife, is the Hinder XM family. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.